Welcome back to the Demon Slayer Gaming Channel. We're going to be continuing our Final Fantasy XIV Dungeon Guide series today. We're going to be taking a look at one of the dungeons that was reworked in patch 6.1, Castrum Meridianum. Now this dungeon has been reduced from an 8-man to a 4-man and it is a much quicker run now. Starting off, you'll just pick up the first two groups and then AoE them down. Some of the units will have a few AoEs. There are a few cone AoEs along with a few line AoEs if you don't have a white mage stunning them all. So just move out of these if you see them. After the first two groups are dead, then you'll pick up the next two groups and proceed towards the first boss. For the first boss, you'll just want to AoE the adds down first. When he casts High Powered Match Tech Ray, you'll just want to move out from in front of him. He can do this pointing at random party members, so whichever direction he faces, you'll just want to move away from him. When he casts Request Reinforcements, then he'll summon additional adds onto the platform that you'll just want to pick up an AoE down. Incendiary Support will do party wide damage that just has to be healed through. It'll hit multiple times. Match Tech Cannon is a circular AoE that he'll throw at a random party member that you just want to move out of. The next request assistance will summon two Magitech Colossus that again you'll just pick up and AoE them down. Make sure to move out in front of him when he does the high powered match tech ray. The next request assistance will do a combination of Colossus and regular units, so make sure that you get all of them before you start AoEing them. Follow this up with another high powered match tech ray. And then another incendiary support. After this, she'll proceed to the disposal chute and head down to the next area. In this area, there will be a constant stream of circular AoEs that you'll need to avoid while you AoE the units down. The Vanguard also does a circular AoE around himself that you can stun him when he begins to cast. After the first two groups are dead, you'll just pick up the death claws that are heading your way and proceed to the next two vanguards. You'll again be dodging circular AoEs the entire time that you're killing these, and the death claws have a frontal cone ability that you'll just want to sidestep out of. After these two groups are dead, you'll just proceed on to the second boss. And the boss moves to the center of the platform and then casts Thermal Barrack Strike. This is going to do a proximity based AoE in one corner of the room. You'll just want to move to the opposite corner of this AoE to reduce the amount of damage that you take. 
He'll then move back to the center of the platform, casting Hyper Charge. This will do a circular AoE around him along with a donut AoE around him, so there will be a small break in between the two AoEs that you'll be able to stand in to avoid it. Sermon Drill is the Tank Buster ability that you'll just want to use a cooldown to help reduce the damage some. I follow this up with another Thermobaric Strike. Followed by an Overcharge, which will be a Frontal Cone AoE. Then he'll move to the center of the platform and cast Targeted Support, which will do a circular AoE under the current location that everyone is standing at followed by another hypercharge. So you'll need to move out of the circular AoEs and then back into the safe spot between the donut and point blank AoE. Follow this with another Sermet Drill. After this, you'll proceed back to the area where you fought the first boss where you'll pick up the Colossus and double Vanguard units, just AoEing them down. The Colossus can do a large frontal cone ability, so make sure that you're facing him away from the rest of the group. And the Vanguards will have their circular AoEs that they'll use on random party members. After this, Sid will destroy the bulkhead for you, and you'll just follow him to the next area. For this final group, you'll just pick all of them up and AoE them down. Once most of the units are dead, then two Colossus will also join the fight. Then after the Colossus and the rest of the units are dead, then you'll be able to face the final boss. When Livia casts Artificial Plasma, this is going to do party-wide damage, so it needs to be healed through. She moves to the center of the platform and casts Roundhouse. You'll want to move out of the large AoE around her before moving back in after the AoE goes off to avoid these smaller AoEs around the outside of the platform. Aglaia Climb is going to be the Tank Buster that she'll want to use a cooldown to help reduce the damage some. When she casts Infinite Reach, this is going to do a line AoE down the center of the platform, along with circular AoEs around the outside of the platform. She'll repeat this ability four different times along the platform, so you'll need to keep watch of what order they are summoned in and move out of the appropriate ones before they go off. She'll then move to the center of the platform and follow this up with multiple line AoEs that she'll just want to sidestep out of. She'll follow this up with another Aglaia's Climb. before casting Thermal Barrack Strike. This will do multiple AoEs around the platform, along with two proximity base AoEs on opposite sides that you'll want to move into the other cardinal directions after the AoEs go off. At the same time, she'll do Stunning Sweep, and if you're hit by this ability in the middle of the platform, 
then you will be stunned and not be able to move away from the proximity AoEs. Should follow this up with another Aglaia climb. And then move back to the center of the platform and cast Thermal Barrack Strike one more time. This time she'll do Angry Salamander immediately and then do four proximity based AoEs where you'll want to move towards the center of the platform to reduce the damage from all of them as much as possible. She'll follow this with a roundhouse where you'll want to move out to avoid the initial AoE and then in to avoid the auxiliary ones. Before casting artificial boost, she'll begin casting artificial plasma. She'll cast this ability four times in quick succession. And this should be it for Castrum Meridianum. I hope this helped everyone out. If it did, please make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and I will catch you on the next one.